Unless you've been living under a rock, in which case, why the heck would you live there? You should live in a house instead. You've probably noticed that the AAA gaming space is not good. Story after sad, sad story of overhyped games, bloated budgets, mismanaged development, CEO drama, and just a bunch of stuff that's pissing everyone off. You'd think that the bigger the budget, the better the game, right? Well, that's what I thought, but no, actually. All the money in the world can't make a good game, apparently. But as the dismal AAA gaming world is circling the drain, the indie game world is flourishing. Some of the best games that you can play today are made by small teams of just a few dedicated, passionate people. And because they don't have AAA game budgets, these games have to be kept modest. And here's the thing, restriction leads to innovation. These games have to be designed so that they are fun games even though they're smaller in scope. And it's because of these restrictions that we are getting so much unique and interesting and beautiful stuff. Some of the best games you can play right now are indie games. And if you don't believe me, then prepare for me to say a toe to so. Because I'm going to show you some amazing indie games today, and I'm gonna freaking a toe to so. And I want to mention that you do not need a straight up gaming PC to be a PC gamer if you like indie games. Most indie games can run on almost any compooper, and the compooper that we're gonna be using today is this the GMK Tech Nookbox K7. It has an i5 13500H CPU with integrated Iris Xe graphics, 32 gigabytes of DDDDR5 RAM, one terabyte of NVMe internal storage, and all the bells and whistles like Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2, dual 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, and triple 4K display support. It's also tiny and cute. If you want to pick one up, I'll include some links in the description below. And I'll do a little mini review of this thing at the end of the video. So stick around for that if you want to know more about it. And I know, I know, you just want me to get onto the games, and I will, but first I need to explain something. You see that subscribe button right down there? If you click that, you get to see even more of my videos. And it won't even cost you anything. So you have to be pretty stupid not to click that if you think about it. I'm just saying. Is calling you stupid a good way to get you to subscribe? Let me know in the comments below. <laughs> this is Archvale. Someone in my Discord server got me into this one, so thanks for that, Max. It's like an RPG bullet hell. I'd say it's a mix of Enter the Gungeon and Legend of Zelda. There's a focus on exploration with randomly generated overworld maps and location maps. You go from area to area to clear out the areas. The, the combat feels like a classic twin stick shooter where you can move around and attack and dodge, but there is a meatiness to the combat that feels tactile. You have a choice of melee, ranged, or magic attacks, and you can upgrade those different combat styles with items like armor and trinkets and upgrades. There are towns along the way to explore and visit, shops and do crafting. It also has a little bit of a Souls-like mechanic because there are these fountains that you're looking for that refill your health and act as save points, but they cause the enemies to respawn as well. When you're out in the world, you're slicing your way through the enemies to get to new locations or hunting for secrets or just farming materials for your new gear. It has a great cute vibe to it. Wonderful pixel art. I love this game and I've only just started. I can't wait to play more. This next game is super popular right now. It's one of the most played games on Steam and that's crazy because this game is made by just one guy. It's basically a deck building card battling game except instead of building a deck of fantasy monsters and fireballs, you're building a deck of just playing cards. And instead of battling an opponent, you're battling a blind. And that's how much money you need to make in the round to beat it. And when you attack, you're actually doing it with poker hands. Each round, you have a limited number of hands and you're trying to beat the blind by making poker combos. You can discard, but you're limited in the number of discards. So there's a great risk versus reward feeling to the choices that you make. After you defeat the blind, you'll have money to spend in a pop-up store. And here you can buy jokers, which are modifiers for the run. You can buy booster packs that add cards to your deck, or they might destroy cards or modify cards to give them special effects. It's the kind of game you think you can play for like 10 minutes, but you end up spending four hours in. Everyone loves this game and you should play it because you'll probably love it too. 
This is blazing chrome and it's freaking ridiculous. Now just watch this game's actual trailer while I read the description to you. In blazing chrome, machines rule the world and the few humans left are on the edge of total extermination, lacking power, prestige, or status among their metal and circuits overlords. <laughs> that, that should tell you all that you need to know about the vibe of this game. It's basically a spiritual successor to Contra. The game is super fun, but it's also very basic. There, there's not a lot to say about it. You run, you jump, you shoot your weapons, you get gun pickups that act differently. The mechanics are tight, as you would expect from a Contra-inspired retro-style shooter. If you like retro games, games from the Super Nintendo or Sega Genesis era, and especially if you like Contra, then, then just play this game. That's all there is to it. Halls of Torment wasn't on my radar because I thought that this was a Diablo style game, but I was totally wrong. This isn't a Diablo style game. It's a vampire survivors style game. And you guys know I love me some survivor like games. And in typical survivors like style, you walk around the map, attack automatically, and you kill stuff and you collect XP and you level up. And then you choose a boost that increases your damage or gives you new abilities, and you can collect armor to upgrade your character, and there are multiple levels, and you survive wave after wave of increasingly difficult enemies to try to take care of your health, but eventually you get overwhelmed and you die. And where the real skill in the game comes from is which upgrades that you choose that will work together to give you a build that lets you survive for longer. The reason that you might want to choose this game is that it has the, the Diablo vibes. You're killing skeletons and slimes and demons and devil dogs. It has become my latest addiction and the overwhelmingly positive rating on Steam should hint that lots of people agree that it's pretty darn fun. This game is called Strafe. It's a procedurally generated roguelite shooter with a classic throwback art style reminiscent of early 3D PC shooters like Quake. And you'll get randomly generated areas that all kind of slot together to form a larger map populated by random assortments of enemies and you, you need to battle your way through the stages to find the key to the door to get to the next stage. At the start of the game you're on your ship and then you choose which starting gun that you want and then you teleport down to the world. In typical roguelite fashion there's permadeath, no saves, and the levels get harder and harder the deeper that you get. So your goal is to get as far as you can until you die, and then you start all over. I love the art style in this game. It, it looks like a game from the Quake era, and that's exactly what I want from a game like this. It's a retro roguelike boomer shooter, and if that sounds like your thing, then you'll probably love this. This game was gifted to me by a friend. Thank you, Crystal, for this one. The game is called Inmost, and it is cute and creepy and strange and beautiful. The world is dilapidated, presumably destroyed by this weird black ooze or this giant monster thing. The, the game jumps between the perspectives of several characters, and your job is to experience the past through the visions of the lives of the people who live there like a dark interconnected story. As you can see, the game is gorgeous. It has a pixel art aesthetic and there is so much attention paid to the character art and especially the world. There is a ton to look at and the subtle animations all over the backgrounds make this just a feast for your eyeballs. The game plays like a cinematic puzzle platformer, so you're going to be solving puzzles, trying to do some careful platforming maneuvers, and there's even some combat for one of the characters. The game isn't long, it's only 4 or so hours, and I haven't beat it, but I intend to. Uh, this is a game that rewards exploring nooks and crannies, and there is a lot of nooks and crannies in the, the weird sad world of Inmost. This here is Slipstream, an arcade style racing game inspired by the spirit of the early 90s. So yeah, another throwback style game. And th this one just oozes nostalgia. Oozes I tell you! There's not a ton to say about it really, I mean one look will tell you what you need to know. There are several game modes, but my favorite is the main mode, which is basically the same as the game Outrun, if you're familiar with that. You drive along the track, and the landscape changes as you go, and in some modes of the game you can choose from one of two directions, and the different environments are each very unique and beautiful. You can start drifting by using the brake, and then when you crash, you can make use of the rewind button, which will take you back like 5 seconds or so. 
Although if you're like me, you'll get into a little crash, rewind, and then get into an even bigger crash. <laughs> if you're into throwback racers, then this is hands down the best that I've ever seen. This game is pretty old, but every time I show it in a video, I get people asking what it is. So here you go. It's called Wiz Orb. The game is more or less a modern version of Breakout or Arkanoid, but it's also sort of an RPG. There is a story, something about an evil eye threatening the kingdom or something. I don't remember. <laughs> You're a wizard, but you become a paddle and then you have a ball and you can shoot the ball and then you need to bounce the ball to br break the bricks. But you also have some spells. So starting off, you can shoot fireballs and control the wind. And as you break the bricks, stuff drops down. There are gems and coins that you're collecting because the story is that there's a ruined town and you can spend your money to fix up the town and get access to vendors and progress the story. I love that the pixel art in this game makes it feel like an authentic 8-bit game from the NES era. This is another awesome throwback style game, a tried and tested game mechanic in a new modern package. Here we have Everhood. I, I didn't know what to expect with this one. I don't remember how it got into my Steam library, but when I saw that it was overwhelmingly positive on Steam, I figured it was worth trying out, and I'm so glad that I did. So the idea is that it's a several styles of music game held together by an adventure game. The basis of combat is a rhythm game where you can move left and right and jump. So you have to avoid the incoming light bars to the rhythm of the music. And there are other types of music games and puzzles. Each is smart and interesting, but the bulk of the game is this main rhythm dancing thing. It almost feels like a rhythm-based bullet hell. And it's so snappy and satisfying that it hooked me immediately. A rhythm game lives or dies by the music itself. And the tunes in this game are great. I can't recommend it enough and I'm genuinely excited to see the story through because it's hooked me. And last but not least, this is Mother Russia Bleeds. It's sort of like Streets of Rage, but like a drug-induced fever dream version. You wake up in a cell and you've been injected with something that's messing with your head. And then when you get into the world, you discover that you can heal yourself by sucking the life juice out of your dying murder victims and then inject that into yourself. In typical beat them up fashion, your goal is to go straight, fight waves of bad guys, see the beautiful sights along the way, and then make it to the boss, kick their butt, and do it all again in a new location. The art style is really unique here. It's, it's sort of got a, a gritty VHS filter over the pixel art, and that adds to the trippiness. This game sort of reminds me of Post Void or Hotline Miami. It, it's a dark and weird world, and you, you really got to channel your inner aggression as you smash your way through it. Just give me more games like this, please. I can just play games like this forever. And that's all the games that I have to show you, but I wanted to give this mini PC a mini review here. For the form factor, I'm going to give this a B. It won't catch attention for its good looks, but it won't catch attention for being ugly either. So it's got that going for it. For IO, we're good here. This is an A, pretty much everything you could need. For the noise, this will be a B. It's very quiet most of the time, but when things get cooking, that fan comes on and it's definitely audible. For the system, a+. Plus. We have a stock Windows 11 Pro installed, no blowware, no viruses, exactly what I want to see. For the performance, I'm giving this a B. At this point, the 13500H processor is outclassed by the new Core 5 chips, but it still is, it's a solid CPU for general computing. It's just an i5 though, so don't expect magic here. For gaming, and by this I mean AAA games, uh, this will be a C+. Plus. We, we have integrated Iris XE graphics, and like I showed, you can run any freaking indie game that you want, but this is not a gaming PC. So don't get it for AAA gaming, because there are better choices for that. And for the value, this is getting a B+. The price is 450 bucks on Amazon after the coupon, and for that you get a solid CPU, 1 terabyte of storage, 32 gigabytes of DDDDR5 RAM, and enough horsepower to do pretty much any of the higher end stuff that you want, except for AAA games. Overall grade of B, I can see lots of people being happy with this thing, and I'll include a link to this in the description below if you want to pick one up. And that brings us to the end. Thanks for watching and stuff. If you like this video, then check out this video, my recent low spec PC hidden gems video where I show you a few of my favorite indie games that you might not have heard about. There's a link on the screen now and down in the description below.
And that's all I got for you today. I'm TechTweeb. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.